Upon returning to Bryn Shander, news was shared about Oral. Town Speaker Duvessa Shane assemble meeting on what to do with the followers of Oral. Sheriff Markham suggests they be put to death and deprive Oral of followers which Gaius and Creed approve of. Priestess Mishan suggests expelling Oral's follower to the blizzard so they may have their god's cold embrace. Come Orhak and Akromo agree to this. Ori wanted mercy on them. For they're just misguided and know no other way. In a private meeting with Duvessa Shane and Sheriff Markham it's discussed that Oral is keeping the sun from rising through powerful magics. And low supplies threaten to cause the city great peril. To which the party suggests the Dwarven Dugger is a potential trade partner. After many hours of strategic planning the party takes some time to recover supplies. Creed attempts to perform a heist and gets a hefty sum of gold. To only get caught by a guard as he is about to exit the noble's home. Relying on his skills and magic teleports away. Using his mask to disguise himself as a north man to hide till time to travel for the glacier. Ori hunted for the Bow of Warning, with no luck in locating it, but got information on a possible whereabouts for it. Tom Orhat went carousing with some locals but awoke in an alleyway in a pool that he hoped was mid mixed with soup and can't remember what happened. Gaius took some time to get a little gambling in, and unfortunately did not succeed and again walked away with a lighter purse. Akroma wrote another scroll of Revivify after having the last one used to bring her back, although she does find herself thinking longingly back to those silvery shores. After a week, Velino Harpel arranged for the expedition to the frozen waste to find the glacier and all the appropriate supplies. Rope, food, warm clothing, sleds, etc. After all the party assembled, most being quite confused when a big north man came walking up sounding like Creed, which he asked us not to inquire. After a long travel through the frozen tundra, the expedition came upon some elk surrounding a dark spire sticking out of snow. Getting closer to the spire, Creed and Kamorhak attempts to sneak up but scare the elk off in surprise to find a were-bear chained to the spire. After a lengthy talk with the were-bear they discover it has been betrayed and does not trust the party yet. When the rest gather around to observe the trapped were-bear, Gaius dispelled the magic on the chains. Afterwards Kamorhak swung his mighty sword and broke the chains. When the chains broke the were-bear falls to the ground and transforms into a woman. Amanatramik is her name. The party gives her enough supplies to go to Bryn Shander. As the party is taking care of Amanatramik, Professor Scan examined the structure and discovered it's an upside-down spire of a netherese design. The door was 40 feet from the ground so it took some time to climb up. Upon entering the structure some magical lights began to illuminate the corridor revealing some statues and doors at the end. One of the doors opened up to a workshop for potions with the contents long since broken. The other door is to a library and an ice chute. Akroma and Gaia search the library and find some books but nothing else of note. Creed and Kamorhak examine the workshop and unfortunately don't find anything salvageable. Ori upon seeing the ice tunnel cannot resist the urging of the others to slide down and bumps her head against metal. Rubbing her head, Ori is immediately grabbed by something looking like a cross between a praying mantis and a cockroach. In response, Ori grabs her rapier and points it at the creature which responds by letting her go. After this, the others join her in the room and discuss what to do with the creature since it appears the cage has landed on its door and is too heavy to lift. As everyone is discussing it, Akroma began to chant something in Celestial and the cage began to grow large enough to allow the creature to escape with everyone else being incredibly annoyed with her. Exploring more of the second level a dead knight is found guarding a blue shimmering man and will not allow anyone close to him. The party effectively confused as to what next to do. Suddenly the shimmering man glances at the party and asks who they are. Creed revealed we are here with Harple, which jogs the man's memories enough for the guard to begrudgingly inform us to go into the next room and activate the shrine for his master. After a few minutes trying to figure out how to activate the eight crystals eventually it switched on with a steady hum. The man steps under the shrine and with a bright light a more fleshy Dizon stands naked before us and his guard Sir Krint steps again between us and him. Gaius informed Harple that Dizon was alive and she demanded where to find the frozen river in the glacier. Afterwards the party gives Dizon cloths and food to make it to Bryn Shander. After sharing some information with the wizard the party rests before setting out for the next leg of the expedition. We bow to she who wears the crown. 
Let the world shiver with dread, clad in winter's whitest gown, her snow enshrouds the dead. Her fury sheds but frozen tears as gray clouds issue forth, her winds across the wasteland shears, bringing blizzards from the north. Ice-kissed flowers caught mid-bloom, beauty kept in all its grace, summer's gone to its silent tomb, stilling in her cold embrace. All the world in winter's white, sheathed in sleet and ice, set upon never-ending night, she conjures paradise. Behold her everlasting rhyme, see how it covers all. Weep not for those she traps in time behind her glacial wall. Sovereign of summer's lost, general of winter's war. Long live the queen of cold and frost. May she reign forevermore. <laughs>